March 1879, Nevers, France. When they opened Bernadette Subarus's coffin 30 years after her death, what they saw defied all logic. The skin still soft, the lips rosy, the hands flexible as if she had fallen asleep the night before. The doctor responsible for the exhumation wrote in his report, his voice choked, I cannot explain what I have before my eyes. That young shepherdess who saw the Virgin Mary in the grottos of Lourdes rested intact, preserved by a force that science could not name, a silence that screamed louder than any words, God acts where he wills. Since the earliest Christians, something extraordinary happens with certain servants of God. Their bodies do not rot. They remain whole, fresh, sometimes perfumed. And this is not rare. There are hundreds of documented cases over 2,000 years, examined by doctors, studied by scientists, witnessed by multitudes. St. Catherine of Bologna died in 1463. More than 500 years have passed. She is still seated in a glass chair in her chapel in Italy. Anyone can see her, the serene face, the delicate hands resting on her lap, the nuns who care for the place say they have never needed to do anything to preserve her. She simply remained. St. John Vianney, the holy curé of ours, was exhumed in 1904, 45 years after his death. They found his body completely preserved. Today he rests in a glass urn in France, and the faithful pass before him in silence, touched by that presence that seems to whisper, holiness leaves marks even on the flesh. Saint Rita of Cassia, deceased in 1457. Saint Francis Xavier, died in 1552 on a deserted island in China. Saint Claire of Assisi, Saint Vincent de Paul, Blessed Imelda. The list is long, and each name carries with it a mystery that science recognizes but cannot decipher. Now, it's important to understand there is an enormous difference between the incorrupt bodies of the saints and the mummies we know from history. In ancient Egypt, the pharaohs were intentionally mummified. Internal organs were removed, cavities filled with herbs, the body bathed in oils and wrapped in bandages. It was a process that took 70 days. Tutankhamun's mummy, found in 1922, was over 3,000 years old. Impressive, no doubt. But it's not a miracle, it's human technique. The incorrupt bodies of the saints underwent none of this. No embalming, no chemical treatment. Many were buried in conditions that should have accelerated decomposition. Damp tombs, broken coffins, waterlogged earth. And even so, they remained intact. There is no natural explanation. And this happens so constantly and numerously in the Catholic Church that one can consider this phenomenon as a divine seal of the authenticity of the faith. When they open these tombs, decades or centuries later, what they find goes against everything we know about death. Bodies that should be dust, bones that should be undone. And yet, there is the person whole, recognizable, often with an expression of peace that impresses even the most skeptical. Saint Bernardine of Siena was exposed for veneration by the faithful for 26 days. 26 days. Any cadaver under these conditions would already be in advanced decomposition. But when they finally buried him, the body was intact. Saint Catherine of Genoa remained in the tomb for 18 months. When they opened it, the shroud was damp and rotted, but her body fresh, intact, as if she had been buried the day before. Nine months after her death, St. Teresa of Avila was exhumed. The coffin had broken. She was covered with earth, her clothes dirty and decomposed, but the body showed no sign of putrefaction. On the contrary, it exhaled a sweet perfume of flowers. Witnesses swore that scent came from no oil, no chemical preparation. It was something that emanated from the flesh itself. Saint Francis Xavier, Saint John of the Cross, and Saint Paschal Balin resisted something even more impressive. Corrosive substances that were thrown on their bodies, quicklime, acids, 
things that should destroy any organic matter. And even so, they remained preserved. Padre Pio, who died in 1968, was exhumed in 2008. Forty years later, his face was preserved, the beard still visible, the body recognizable to those who knew him in life. The medical experts who examined him found no traces of advanced decomposition, only that strange permanence that defies our certainties. But there's more. Many of these bodies not only remained intact, they exhaled supernatural perfumes. Saint Catherine de Ricci, Saint Philip Neri, Saint Gerard Magella, Saint Gemma Galgani. In the first half of the 20th century, a specialist was sent to the convent of the blessed martyr Mary of the Angels in Spain to try to identify the nature of the perfume coming from her body. He had to confess it resembled no perfume of this earth. Pope Benedict XIV, in his work on the beatification of the servants of God, wrote something important. That the human body does not smell bad after death is possible, but that it exhales a sweet, persistent odor. Pleasant to all this is above its natural powers. It must be attributed to a superior cause. One must think of a miracle. There are still cases where these bodies remained soft and flexible for years. Saint Catherine of Bologna had a body so pliable 12 years after her death that she was placed sitting in the position she remains in to this day. There was no cadaveric rigidity, no hardening, only that strange docility of flesh that should be dead. Other saints perspired precious liquids, blood, oil, water. Saint Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, Saint Nicholas of Tolentino, Saint Agnes of Montepulciano. St. Camillus de Lellis. The oil that flowed from the body of blessed Claire Gambacorta, who died in the 14th century, continues to pour from her hands and feet to this day. Another extraordinary case is that of St. Charbel Makhlouf, a Lebanese religious. Four months after his death, they exhumed his body. It constantly emitted blood and water similar to the open side of Christ on the cross and the amount of liquid that came from his body far exceeded the normal amount of liquid found in any living human being. There were also supernatural lights. Saint Guthlac of Rheims was seen enveloped in brilliant light for several minutes. Saint John of the Cross, Saint Anthony of Strancone, Saint Joan of Lestinac. But perhaps the most impressive was again Saint Charbel. A light shone intensely over his tomb for 45 consecutive nights. It was witnessed by several villagers, including Muslims. This led to the exhumation of the body, revealing the phenomena that are observed to this day. Why does God preserve some bodies and not others? The Church has never claimed that incorruptibility is definitive proof of sanctity. There are saints whose bodies decompose normally. Holiness is in the soul, not in the flesh. But these signs are not accidental. They remind us of something we easily forget. The human body is not disposable. We were created, body and soul, in the image of God. And in the final resurrection, this body will return glorified, incorruptible forever. The incorrupt bodies of the saints are like harbingers of this, small windows open to eternity. They tell us, death does not have the last word. Saint Bernadette spent years sick, suffering from asthma and bone tuberculosis. She died young, at 35, consumed by pain. But that body that suffered so much remained intact, as if God wanted to show that suffering united with Christ is not waste, it is seed of glory. Saint John Vianney slept two or three hours a night. He spent the whole day in the confessional, hearing sinners carrying the weight of souls. He ate little, prayed always, lived in total detachment. When he died, his body was exhausted, but it did not dissolve. It remained there, silent witness to an entire life given to God. If these stories touch your faith, if they make you stop and think about eternity, subscribe to the channel. By doing so, you help us continue sharing these truths that traverse centuries and remain alive because they come from God. Of course, 
The church does not automatically accept all reports of incorruptibility. There are many saints whose bodies were preserved by request of ecclesiastical authorities for veneration by the faithful. Even in cases where preservation occurs in a surprising way, the church adopts a cautious approach. It only issues a final verdict when events cannot be explained by human science. This same attitude of prudence should be recommended to all the faithful, without allowing themselves to be contaminated by the skepticism of the world. Always remember the purpose for which God works these wonders, to lead people to faith in His divine Son and in His holy church. When the faithful visit the sanctuaries where these incorrupt bodies rest, something happens. It is not morbid curiosity. It is reverence. It is recognition. Before those serene faces, those hands that once prayed the rosary, held the crucifix, blessed the poor, people kneel, they cry, they pray, they ask for intercession. Because there is someone who conquered, someone who crossed through death and reached the other side, someone who now lives fully in God, but left here, in this world, a visible, palpable sign that everything Christ promised is true. The incorruptibility of the saints is not magic. It is not superstition. It is incarnate theology. It is the gospel made flesh, literally. It is God telling us, with the delicacy and strength that only He has. I take care of my own. I preserve what is mine. And what is mine is not lost. May these incorrupt bodies remind us every day that holiness is possible, that eternal life is not a beautiful idea, but a reality that awaits us, and that it is worth it, worth everything to live in such a way that when our body becomes dust, our soul shines incorrupt before God.